A large, partially developed bullfrog tadpole is what we're making today. I don't think this is gonna be a one day. Uh, what's the weather? Oh my goodness. Never mind, this is gonna be a one day. The chance of rain just disappeared. It was like 50, now it's 20. 11.39, here we go. We're making a three-piece, large, partially developed bullfrog tadpole swim bait. And we're gonna try to catch a fish on it. Jeez, man. This just took a crazy twist. Let's go cut this out. Well, I gotta glue this on. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. I was gonna be all chill and do a nice relaxing video. But when that chance of rain disappears, we go hard. Now fellas, I know what this looks like. I mean, feel free to comment below what this looks like. That just helps me, but I'm telling you, I already know what this looks like. This is a challenge. I feel rushed. This is no joke. This is a three-piece swim bait. And I think this is gonna amount to a six-inch bait too. And I have detail to put into it. I have partially developed legs to put off of the body of this. And I'm gonna do my best to make this swim good. I don't have time to go out and test it. I need to place the weight correctly, have it swim well, have it be a functional bait and catch a fish by the end of this video. This is, this is a rush. In the video, the one day build where I made that little crappie crankbait, I caught one of these wow. big full-sized uh, bullfrog tadpole. And they're a strange little creature. I am quickly sketching out some stuff. I find when I start sanding on it and cutting things out, that's when I can get really good symmetry. I should measure if I do have this tail centered though. Yeah, it is. My eyeballs did not let me down. I nearly started cutting this out and I forgot to leave some stock on the wood for where I want the partially developed legs to be. We almost struck disaster right there, but we got it, okay. So I didn't draw any lines. This came fresh off the bandsaw and I'm just taking a knife to it and trying to cut out chunks. Not ideal. I mean, usually you wanna mark out where you should cut and then cut, but I don't know, feeling confident today <laughs> and uh, I'm kind of in a hurry. I do have my template still and it's the perfect shape. So I can kind of... Where's my pencil? I can kind of mark things where they need to be before I commit too hard, you know? Kind of as a disclaimer, when you're working with a razor sharp carving knife like this and on wood and you're in a hurry, um, you're very liable to cut yourself badly. Chisels and sharp hand tools like this can be no joke. So just be careful. It's best to not be in a hurry, but I gotta provide some entertainment value for you guys, right? Feels like cheating when I use that. All right, now I'm gonna seriously start marking out some lines and carving to them. Got some legs drawn on there. I'm gonna carve them out. The legs on these partially developed tadpoles are ugly. They really look embryotic, you know? Yeah, I really want them to stick out far too from the body of this bait to definitely look like there's something else there. They're gonna be attached to the second segment of the body of this bait. So they're not gonna be their own piece. So I want them looking very set apart. Again, sorry for all of the freaking noises on the other side of the street. It's just getting worse. Like, the mountain of dirt over there 
is now like almost twice as tall as my house. I have no idea what they're doing. Why you would need a mountain of dirt that tall is beyond me. I should show you guys. What could that possibly be? Let's get back to work. There, the legs are blocked out. Now I gotta add the detail to them. I'm going for a bit of an undercut on these legs too. Make them pop out a little more if there's curvature behind the, the front of the legs. So that's what I'm doing first here. Could have swore I just sliced into my pinky, but I did not. It's a good feeling to not. <laughs> kind of got the adrenaline going there. Careful, fellas and fellettes. This can be dangerous. Okay, there they are with the undercuts. I think that looks pretty good. You can see a shadow behind it. Now I'm gonna kind of round off the face of these legs and then add some toes, and then they're done after I sand all that. There, I'm pretty happy with that and those legs there. Nice and proportional. You can really notice them when you look at the whole thing. All right, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, one second. Yeah, there's some detail back here in the tail. There's a thinner section. Let me just show you. You see that thinner section in the center? That section's thicker than the rest of the tail, so I gotta carve out a little bit of a, something that's noticeable right there. Something like that. The outside of this thing that I'm scoring right now, I think it it gets like tissue paper thin. I'm not gonna make it that thin on this bait because I want there to be some structure still with the wood. So I'm just gonna have the indication of what that looks like on the tail here. Gotta come back and round off this edge too. It's a soft feature, so you don't want it to look like a sharp cutoff. Okay, I'm happy with that. I got the main features carved out on this bait. Just gotta mark out the eyes, drill them, then I'm gonna cut the joints and keep going. Here we go, critical point in this build. I have the lines drawn where I want the joints to be cut. I'm gonna lay this plate flat on the table of the bandsaw and cut these lines as straight as possible. I'm trying to bisect these marks so I'm not cutting on the inside or outside. I'm just trying to stay right on the line, keep the bait flat and cut. Got all them pieces cut out and the body of this bait is ready to go other than having the lead in it. And the lead pot's heating up right now. I just plugged it in. Now, I gotta make the connections that are gonna hold the body together. I need four of them. And I want these things to be tiny. So this is how I do that. I just hold them against each other like that in a vise and twist them. <laughs> I don't use like a little steel rod or anything to twist the eye around. I just hold the other side in the vise really tight and twist it. Works out good. Maybe you could do it all at one time. I've never tried that before. We're about to. Gotta look for those speed techniques. It requires a little bit of straightening out, but that worked. I 
I pulled that one back super tight while I twisted and then it doesn't require any straightening out. So that works really good actually. Very clean. So it's gonna have one big hunk of lead right in the center of the head, weighing the front down and then the tail is just gonna follow and do the swimming action. It's a miracle. The lead pot is ready right when I need it. I really feel like I've been going fast, but it's 1.23. We've been working on this over an hour. Almost glued it to my vise there. You don't want to do that. That was super glue and baking soda, by the way. Doesn't look like it, but that's actually perfectly smooth. Drilling out the pilot holes for the joint connections right now. I suppose all the others too, like the line tie and the hook hangers. There, got the hardware shoved in those pilot holes I just drilled. It's not glued in, but looks good. There's the line tie. And the two hook hangers. Have to seal this wood now, and this bait's ready to be painted. I'm gonna seal it with super glue. That's my go-to technique now. Works really good for these one day builds. I don't know, it might work better than polyurethane or wood sealer. I know a lot, there's a lot of guys out there that use this technique on just normal baits that they build and sell. It certainly is a bit of a messy technique though. Hopefully I won't need to run out and get more super glue. It's crazy how good that works. It's hard as nails. White. Not off to a good start there. So it looks like the lightest color on a bullfrog tadpole is that yellowish whitish color at the belly. I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna move to that green around the head and then I'm gonna go into the darker ones in the back. These are really not simple paint schemes. You can even see a little bit of striping. I don't know, I'll have to come up with something clever to really imitate this. A Little bit of yellow there. That's the level of green I'm going for. It's gonna be behind a lot of dark stuff. That's gonna look pretty bright once the dark stuff's on this thing, but that looks good. Next up is some detail sapia, which I believe is brown. Yeah, super dark brown. This is what's gonna go on the top. It's also what's going to start coming down the sides. When I get further down the sides with the splotchiness, I'm gonna switch to raw umber, which is kind of greenish. You can see what I mean by splotchy right there. I'm really gonna try to imitate that splotchiness with a paintbrush. This detail paint is super thin and uh, you really need to make sure what you're working with is dry before you put 30 PSI back on it because it'll push your paint around a little too much and make it look bad. So that's a really good gradient of color, a good base to start out on. I'm gonna be painting with a brush on top of all this. Got some raw umber here. Gotta be careful. Nice and random. What I'm going for is leaving little pockets of the original color showing through. This is gonna take a little while. I'm switching up my technique. I'm blotching it on more now. I think that's quicker and it's going to look better. When I go back and add some detail black to the top, that's all going to fade in really nicely. I've got the headpiece right here in my other hand ready to reference from so I can match these two pieces up really well. 
if you don't do that, you can, sometimes you can end up really telling like the paints off from piece to piece. And that don't look too good when it's that way. It's good to use that technique where you just kind of stop painting when it's good enough. Like you try not to perfect stuff the Bob Ross way, you know. Just, that's good enough right there. I want to add a little bit right here, but, you know, leave it alone. And it looks natural that way. Alright, I already put some detailed white on the belly. Now I'm putting some black on the head. And I'm being really careful. I just barely want the detail towards the top of the head there to disappear. I don't want the black to overpower the rest of the colors or take away any of the colors. Next up is some red oxide. It's kind of a reddish color, reddish brown. And it's gonna go very lightly around the perimeter of the tail and then a little bit on the feet because that's what it needs. After that, we're gonna get into a little bit of the pearls, glue the eye on, clear coat the bait. We're getting there. Gotta love a Joby tripod. I put too much on the legs, but I'll go back and clean that up, maybe with some detailed white. Last thing, I'm gonna try. I've got a comb and I've got some pearl white. You can see in the detail of the body, there's like ever so slightly some stripes it's not super pronounced on the real thing, but I want to go for it anyway and try to make some, I don't know, stripey looking things. And yeah, that looks pretty good. It goes away at different angles, so it's not too crazy looking in real life. That looks really good. I'm gonna make sure that those are all done dripping. So I'm gonna give it like 10 minutes in there. It's already been about 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna blast the UV clear coat with UV light, because that's what you do with this stuff. It's almost done. 304. Looking good now. So I just got to re-drill out these holes. The clear coat kind of went over them. It didn't kind of go over them, it totally went over them. It's time to put all of this together. Just like that, we got a three piece, six inch long bullfrog tadpole bait, swim bait. Let's go see how it works. Gotta get suited up. It's a beautiful day right now. And not so much a beautiful day, but just perfect fishing conditions. It's cloudy, there's zero wind. There was a chance of rain, but now there's not. So I think it's kind of low pressure. I'm kind of making all this up, but I feel really good right now. Even though I'm fishing with a six inch, three piece big bullfrog tadpole swim bait, I feel good. Let's do this. I even brought some bug spray with me. liking it so far. It's 
by no means the action that I was going for, but I kind of like it, what it's doing. It's just having this little, just subtle shimmy. I think it's too aerodynamic. It's tapered off too much towards the back and everything just wants to stay in line. Anything that gets out of line, it's just a subtle shimmy back, back into what's aerodynamic, I guess is what a best way I can put it. Which has already produced a hit, so I bet we can get one. Got a nice chunky one. <laughs> Everybody already knew this, but uh, it's official now. Bass-like bullfrog tadpoles. Oh my goodness. Get out of here. Woo. Whoa. That was the craziest release I've ever released. Let's get some more. This is fun. I'm working it kind of like a jerk bait kind of thing. I'm giving, I'm imparting a lot of action, is what I'm trying to say. And it's doing some, like you twitch it and it rolls up a little and it flashes its side. And swim it along and twitch it and it, yeah, you guys get it. Hopefully we can get another. Oh, I don't know what that was. You guys saw that, right? I got stuff. Ooh, what was that? I got stuff going after this bait. By the way, 5.15 is when I caught that fish. Challenge complete. It was actually like 5.05, it's like 10 minutes ago, but I forgot. I guess it doesn't matter. I caught it the same day, so challenge complete. I'm gonna do a bit more casting here, see what happens. I think this would be fun to fish with at the river, so probably just a little bit more casting here and I'm gonna go to the river. Redemption, we did it. After the last video of not catching anything, we actually caught something with a six inch bullfrog tadpole. Left it in the car. And whenever you can get anything on a six inch long swim bait, that's a good day. Doesn't matter what you catch in my book. I spent a long time at the river and didn't get anything. I thought I had a bite. I think something just bumped into it. I'm happy. That worked out well. Got home just before it started raining too. Redemption. There's nothing else to say. This video is over. This successful video is over. On to the next bait. Okay, Chip, today's your lucky day. Sit. Good boy. Now you have to stay out of the strawberries because I gave you one. Good boy.